everybody, Eric and Jax here from Nomadic Fanatic. I have a special video for you today. You asked for it. It is time to finally update you on the progress of what Miranda, the RV, looks like today after all of the changes I made. I cannot wait to share all this information with you. But first, a huge shout out to my video sponsor. Thank you, ExpressVPN, for sponsoring this video today. Don't give a hacker an easy access into your online world. Protect your emails, your financial details, and your passwords with ExpressVPN today. ExpressVPN encrypts your internet connection with the highest standards of encryption available today and gives you unrestricted access to all parts of the internet. I've been using ExpressVPN for over a year now. It'll help protect your phone, tablet, or your computer. It's simple to install ExpressVPN on your phone or computer, and I personally use it for lots of my online streaming data. Say you're going through and you're not finding all the titles you have because a lot of these places restrict it based on the country. Simply reroute your connection to the country of your choice, refresh, and your viewing options are hugely improved with the content you're available to have now. I could not live without it right now. It has opened so many more doors. It gives me the freedom of security with my internet browsing and protects my data from online thieves. Find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the video description below this video, expressvpn.com forward slash nomadic. And thanks again, ExpressVPN, for sponsoring this video. Now we're going to change gears. And let's talk about the changes I've made in this RV since I've owned it. Yeah, so I felt it time to do an updated uh, little tour of my RV and kind of show with you a lot of the changes that I've made, which are mostly just going to be the interior stuff, but talk about every little aspect of the RV and what I like and maybe what I would have done differently. But definitely time to give you a new tour of my RV, Miranda here. She's got two slides, a big one here on the passenger side, which is giving me problems. The teeth underneath the slide mechanism are all chewed up. It's very difficult to get this to go back in. But sometimes if I'm gonna be parked somewhere like right now, it's nice to have the extra floor space. More about that once we get inside, because I do not have to have this slide out to be able to use it. Lots of uh, under storage here. Got a few Christmas decorations around it right now. And here's the driver's side of the RV with the driver's side slide out. This is where my new rec dual recliner system is at. So having the slide out puts me farther away from the monster TV, which I will show you in just a minute also. Again, lots and lots of storage underneath. There's four on each side. Well, that's the uh, water. This is the part I don't like for winter because the water pump itself is exposed on the outside of the RV with no protection or heat. Other than that, everything else seems to do okay. This is the motorcycle carrier. This is where the motorcycle is stored while I'm driving. Uh, it comes with a seven foot ramp here that allows me to get a lot more room. I removed the license plate from here and popped it up to here where you can see it so that the motorcycle isn't blocking it. As well as I added LED strips on the back here so you can definitely see my turn signals and brake lights that are not blocked by the wheels. Let's talk about solar. The thing I'm most happy with this RV, maybe the modification that just makes everything work is the epic solar system off-grid boondocking setup that I've had installed on this RV which makes it possible and the brains of it I will show you but up on the roof we've got four solar panels up there that are 320 watts a piece so I've got 1,280 watts of solar permanently mounted to the roof. I was originally going to go with just three and then possibly tilt those panels in the winter time when the sun's lower. Since I found out I have more room, I just added a fourth panel and therefore I get that 25% extra solar anyway, naturally, and I don't have to climb up and down the roof at all. So yeah, lots of watts of solar on the roof, but we got to have a way to store it. And that's where this compartment here comes into play, the brains of my solar operation. This is why I do not have to go to RV parks anymore and plug into power. Why I don't have to run the generator for power. I've got five lithium batteries equaling 500 usable amp hours of storage, a 3000 watt inverter, 150 amp charge controller there. And my buddy Wayne, RV prepper Wayne on YouTube installed this system so that inside we're tapped into the fuse box inside, which means every outlet in there works when I'm not plugged in. As if I were plugged in basically, I don't know the difference. We'll go inside and I will show you an updated tour of Miranda here. And so now we will step into the RV and we'll take a little tour. Ready, Jax? So again, both slides are out right now, but I'm gonna kind of show you where those slides would be when they are inside. And uh, we will start here in the living room where I guess the most changes have happened, not the most difficult changes, 
but the most has changed because most RVs have an uncomfortable couch and a dinette, and I no longer have either of those. This is where the monstrous waste of space four-person dinette used to be, and now I have this nice, convenient little six-drawer system. Keep filming gear and everything else in, and there's this monstrosity right here. This is a 55-inch TV. Don't know if it's absolutely the largest physical TV in an RV. It is definitely fun to watch sports and movies on this TV. But the TV was just part of it. That really uncomfortable couch sofa that came with the RV was not working. That is why Jax and I upgraded to these awesome dual recliners with cup holders and storage underneath here. Do you want to demonstrate how it works, Jax? Once you sit down, you just pull this cord right here. They're not like electrical or anything. And of course, Jax isn't going to be able to sit back, but the recliner goes back. It's a zero wall recliner. And so he'll sit there. I'll sometimes sit here. When I get up to go get another barley pop, he'll steal this seat and then I'll go back over there because he likes the warmest seat. Really, dude, you don't need to do that right now. I do have the front curtains up here because I'm living in the RV right now and I don't really need that, but I can open that up and have a nice view. This TV up here is used mainly just for my Epic security system, which I'm not going to talk specifics because I don't want there to be anything like, like a loophole or something that I leave out, but I installed seven exterior cameras around the outside of the RV and also one inside here so that I can monitor the RV while I'm away, or I can simply just look out and find out what exactly is going on at any corner of my RV. Also, the interior camera is great because I have the cameras hooked to the internet all the time, a server, so that I can remotely watch from my phone anywhere in the country. I can see what Jax is doing on the couch, what's going on inside the RV in general. I can even hang a little thermometer up near it and see what the temperature is remotely in the RV. And I am getting a new alarm installed in the RV while I'm here in this location soon. Yeah, the TV is a very large TV, uh, but this is not just for like pleasure. You know, this is my, my, my work vehicle, but I also need to have a fun way to watch movies. And I have a lot of online streaming subscriptions. Um, oh, by the way, one of the things I do to help me boost the signal, because I do rely on that cellular signal for Wi-Fi, is I have a Wi-Fi booster. I'm not using it right now, but there's the block for it. And then up on the roof of my RV is the amplifier and the exterior antenna, which is going to give me much better signal strength to the nearest cell phone tower to be able to have Wi-Fi on the road. All right, let's stand back and look at this again. Remember, this slide is out right now. So when I'm driving, this, this slide, this edge of the couch comes to right there, leaving me this whole section open and wide. It's actually wider here than it is in the hallway there that is kind of fixed. I can't change any of that. So yeah, we'll move on to the kitchen over here. I've got my gas stove and my oven. I've got a microwave. And as I mentioned, every outlet and USB in the entire RV is always hot, always available on solar, okay? That's why I have my K-Cup coffee maker over here plugged into a power strip. I can run that no problem off of my solar batteries. I've got storage under the sink, which as you can imagine, once this slide comes in, I do not have access to those two drawers. So nothing that I need on a regular basis is stored in there. It's mostly just cleaning supplies. I've got a dual basin sink there. I hang up my coats, my keys, and my sunglasses here. I've got my 100,000 subscriber plaque there. We got my fridge and freezer with uh, Mr. Han Solo there in carbonite there. Always running on gas propane for me. Uh-huh, I don't think that was closed all the way. We've got Jax's bowl for water and food right here, which reminds me, I forgot to point out the litter box, kind of hidden in stealth right here in the corner. Easy to maintain and clean, and I just spray it every time he uses it, and we just keep up with that. It's no biggie, right? No, no biggie at all. Got storage for pots and pans in here, and, and a lot more cupboard space for other foods. Yep. This is a line I had put in over the summer, which is tapped into my existing propane line so that I can plug in my catalytic heater directly off of the propane line in the RV. And then here is the old dual bunk bed situation. There were two bunk beds here taking up a bunch of space. And I took those out and converted this into my own little office. Most of the stuff on the desk is secured to the desk. Those cameras need to move, but everything else is secured by Velcro. 
Velcro, everything, yes. And I do want to get a better office chair. Let's go over to the bathroom. I have a nice, big, comfy shower in there. Mm -hmm. I got my sink and toilet. And of course I have a night light in here that stays on all the time, so I'll cover that. You can see it's always on, might as well. It doesn't run any power and it's an easy way to light up the bathroom in here. So there's that. And that takes us to the master bedroom here. And remember, the slide is out right now. This is where I have made the biggest changes noticeably. The bed now goes north to south instead of east to west, which meant when the slide is in the end position, which this base would come to about right here, uh, the bed going this way, you couldn't access any of the drawers. Even, even these ones up here would not open, and there was no way to walk around the bed. Now, with the slide in and this change right here, I can walk all the way around the bed with the slide in. Jax, you like that? I got Jax's food right here, an extra kitty litter right here. I kept one end table with a drawer, fan, and a light. This window here can open, let in some air with a screen. It's also an emergency exit. And we do have our little mattress here. Very nice, comfortable mattress there. Got my massive magnet board here. I do have a lot of magnets, but this is the largest magnet board that you've ever seen. This is six feet long by four feet tall. Got it on Amazon for $180. And right now I have removed the old TV that was right here. I don't use it. I'm gonna do something else like storage here. Otherwise, I've got all my clothes hung up. My jeans are kind of piled up down here and my sweaters and hoodies. Socks and boxers in one drawer and utilizing every bit of storage. Yes, this is where Jack spends about 18 hours a day sleeping on the bed. Yes, Sims does. Yes. So did I cover everything? Uh, that's basically the four main remodels. The couch converted to the dual recliner, the dinette converted into the TV area, the bed switching that so that it's a walk around with the slide, and then of course my office space with the dual bunk area. That is how I mostly I have made this RV mine uh, and comfortable for both of us on the road full time. So anyway, just wanted to update. I've had lots of people ask me what the RV looks like now, uh, eight months after I got it. In this box right here, I have some awesome news. It's been exactly a year since I introduced stickers on this channel and right away, and those featured the old RV, Yoda. So it was time to stop into a bulletproof works over there and had some new stickers made for the channel. It's a new type of material. It is UV resistant and 100% waterproof. It features the new RV. Jax has been moved to the roof of the RV. We got some palm trees in there and Miranda looking really, really good. So <laughs> these make great stocking stuff stuffers or if you have an outdated one that was not made of the best quality before, if you want to get one of these, they are for sale now. I'll put a link in the video description. If you're interested, I have a special end of 2019 price for these. You can get two of them for five dollars or five of these for ten dollars shipped internationally and that's a really good price i'm kind of undercutting the market for uh, youtube sticker sales but yeah that is the price until the end of 2019 or until i sell out here in east alton because i've got the time to sit down and write out the envelopes hand handmade and send them out to you before i get back on the road before thanksgiving's over so if you're interested link in the video description below otherwise jackson and i are we're going to attempt to stay warm. It, it, it is getting colder here in Illinois. <laughs> so we're going to do our best and just, just roll with the punches. Uh, some people are like, Eric, you're not chasing 70 degrees anymore. Well, neither was I when I was in California two months ago. 110 degrees. Now 30 degrees. Well, I average those two out. We're still sitting pretty about 70 degrees average. I mean, right? I guess. I don't know. Anyway. We'll be back with some more videos from Illinois soon here, guys. And remember, if you're interested in those stickers, get them now while I got them in stock and I'm available to handwrite all those envelopes and ship them out to you. And thanks so much for supporting the channel, guys. Also, if you're on Patreon and you are in one of the top two tiers, the personalized postcard tier or the signed autographed picture tier, I'm going to send you two stickers automatically with this month's Patreon mail out. So thank you guys over there on Patreon. I'll put a link for Patreon also if you want to see some extra videos and clips of Jack Snye over there. Otherwise, so long. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye.